Hey guys, what's up? I hope you had an awesome week. I'm starting to get excited because I've only got two things left to do before I have an operational still. First, I need to get a shotgun condenser built, and second, I need to get my controller sorted. Seeing as I'm still waiting on a few things for my controller, this week, we're building a shotgun condenser. Let's go do it. Welcome to Stilla everyone, just in case you're new here, this channel is all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So have a look around, check a few things out, if this is what you're into, if you like distilling or you think you're going to get into it, hit that subscribe button down below because i got all sorts of stuff coming up. Alright guys, like I said, it's time to finally build the shotgun condenser and honestly ever since I decided that's what I was going to do, I've been kind of nervous about this. It just seems like a little bit of a complex build and there's a whole lot of things that all have to come together at once that need to be lined up and quite precise. So like I said, I'm a little bit nervous, but I've got some really good advice. I've had some really good hints and tips from some people that really know their stuff. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna get a functional shotgun condenser. I don't think it's gonna be pretty, but who cares, right? As long as it works, I'm happy. Seeing as I haven't used the Aviator Snips or the Pro Silver 2 before, I wanted to have a little bit of a play with them and just kind of get used to it before I got stuck into this project. So instead of just doing stuff for the hell of it, I decided I may as well build something that I actually wanted. So check this out. Ha <laughs> ha! So this is a cold smoking unit. And one day, hopefully, it's going to create many, many delicious meals, but also smoke grain for me. Probably a few cocktails too, those are delicious. Basically it's a chamber to hold wood chips or dust or chunks, whatever you want to use, and then a ventry valve up top. Let's give it a whirl and see how it works. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Mmm, manuka. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I reckon that's pretty successful. I'm pumped with that, that's cool. Um, it's nice to have a play with stuff and make something that is actually worth using at the same time, so yeah. So you guys don't have to sit around watching me cut things over and over again. I've got a fair bit of the prep work done. So let's go have a look what I've got and we'll get right into this. There is 540 millimeters of, or 54 centimeters of the two inch copper, five lengths of 15 mil copper, each at 500 millimeters long or 50 centimeters. Two stainless steel ferrules for the two inch copper or the 50 mil copper. 2% uh, pro silver, 15% pro silver. The map gas and the cheap eBay torch. This used to be some of the 2 inch copper that I hammered flat into plate, I did that in one of the other videos. And these very important temp plates that someone very kindly hooked me up with. I have taken the liberty of gluing those onto the plate already with a little bit of wood glue. I've also got the aviation snips, some gilbos and vice grips. And the trusty drill to drill those holes. I'll be using a couple of smaller drill bits to start the holes but then after that Christmas tree to get that to the right size. In my mind one of the hardest parts of this was probably going to be cutting out and drilling the plates so I wanted to do that first and I wanted to secure it down nice and secure so things weren't moving while I was working on them. I worked my way out through a couple of smaller drill bits and then on to the Christmas tree bit at which point I realized that the Christmas tree bit and the copper didn't match in size properly. And I'm guessing that's because it was metric copper and imperial bit. In any case, I had a bit of a tough time. I had to sort of come at it from both sides and try and go halfway between two of the sizes on the bit. Uh, but in the end, I got a close enough result, I guess. It was a little bit touch and go, a couple of the gaps literally had a millimeter copper holding it together, but it worked. Next up I needed to cut these things out. For the first disc I guess I was kind of still practicing a little bit, but by the second one I'd got the hang of it. I was given a whole lot of really good advice on how to use these aviation snips and how to cut these things out, so I'm going to pass that on to you now. First up, don't close them all the way, it leaves a big nasty mark, kind of like a, a gash or a tear, I guess. Also, you're going to want to make at least two cuts, so make a rough cut all the way around first, and then go back and make your real cut. 
Honestly, I made a whole bunch of cuts just slowly working in until the point where I felt confident enough to actually just cut on the line. And lastly, if you haven't got aviation snips and you're going to do something like this, get some. I'm so glad I did. These things are awesome. I love them already. But just so you know, the different colored handles actually do mean different things. The red snips, for me, that was what I decided would be best. That's right hand, left cut. I'm not going to go into it now, but check it out before you buy some. At this point, obviously, I was really keen to get that plate into the end of the 50 mil copper and see what the fit was like. I'm not going to tell you it was perfect, because obviously, in a second, you're going to see it's not. But for my first time using aviation snips and doing anything like this, I got to say, at this point, I was pretty happy with myself. As soon as I started thinking about this project, there was one main thing that stood out in my mind, and that was the order in which to put things together in. The first option was to braise the two plates and the five 15mm copper pipes together, and then drop the whole thing into the 50mm copper. Seeing as I literally couldn't even get one plate through the 50mm tube easily, I decided that that was not going to work for me. Instead, I decided to pretty much assemble the whole thing by the ferrules before I'd actually brazed anything. And then once it was assembled, start brazing. It, uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It literally took me an hour and a half to get this thing assembled and all in one piece. So all these clips that you've been watching just now are just a sample of the debacle that ensued. To make it even worse, the second that I finally got it all together, I realized that I didn't clean the plates. That is still the paper from the template stuck on there. <laughs> In the end, I got super lazy and I decided not to pull it apart and clean it. I just couldn't face having to put it together again. It did seem to burn off relatively well, but I know that's kind of dicey. I tried to take things nice and slow with the brazing. And remember all those awesome tips that you guys gave me. I'll put a link up top to that video just in case anyone wants those tips. This video is not about how to braise. Some of those larger gaps did give me a little bit of trouble, but I just kind of kept working on it, kept using the heat to move things around or trying to, and kept working at it. In the end, I got to a point on both ends that I felt things were looking pretty good. I just finished brazing, so now both plates and all five of the 15 copper pipes are totally connected. I'm sure there'll be a few little leaks here and there that I'll have to patch up when I can water test it. I realized I never drilled the holes for the water in and out. Okay, so not a problem, right? I can just drill the holes now. Problem is the only drill bit I've got that's large enough is this fella. And by the time it gets large enough, it's long enough that it's going to do a bit of work on the 15mm copper on the inside. So I've got two options. One, I can wait, buy a bit tomorrow and do it tomorrow, I guess. That would probably delay the video. And Or I can drill to the largest drill bit I've got right now and then use, I guess, the Dremel and a grinding bit to make it a bit bigger. I don't know. I'm going to let this cool down and then I'll decide what to do when I've got the chance to do some more work. After a bit of thinking, I decided just to steal these fittings from the brew kit, raise them on, and be done with it. Then I ran out of gas. So these fittings were put in pretty ugly. So we're all ready to test the water. Uh, obviously the water's coming in here. I have put a ball valve uh, on the end here so I can control water flow directly at the condenser later on if I need to or wish to. Um, and then obviously coming out here and I've just got it flying into the sink now um, anyway the moment of truth let's uh, let's see what happens oh shit. <laughs> so we, we have a fairly serious leak all right uh, I've just moved things around so I don't make a total mess in the shed with the water going everywhere uh, but looks like it is coming from right in behind that little 15 mil 
spot in there. Um, that one's pretty easy to spot. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of give the whole thing a once over, see if there's any other leaks anywhere. I'm, I'm sure there will be a couple of small ones. And then I think the best way forward is to draw a little diagram uh, so I know exactly what I'm dealing with and I can um, refer to that while I'm trying to fix it. All right, so we've given the whole thing a once over and the damage isn't as bad as I thought it was. Uh, that is the main leak that I showed you just before. Looks like there's another small one just here, but that could be just water running down from that. It's kind of hard to tell seeing as this one's leaking so much. Um, and then down at the other end, I've got a small leak somewhere in here, but I couldn't find it. Um, I'll have to note it down anyway. Uh, and I've also got a very slow leak coming out uh, where that stainless steel fitting has been put in. Um, I'm guessing that's because I couldn't get the torch hot enough last night. Uh, so hopefully that end will be nice and easy to fix. Whew! Okay, so it looks like that last fix did it. I've just had it hooked up to the tap on full pressure for about 10 minutes and I can see no leaks anywhere. I've had a really good listen all around it. I can't hear any gurgling or sucking sounds. So I'm gonna call it cooked. I'm gonna say this stage is done. I would love to have got the ferrules on either end and have it hooked up to the rest of the stool in this video. That was kind of my cheeky goal. But just due to a few things like running out of gas and having to wait overnight and stuff, it's not gonna happen. I'm already behind on this video. So we're gonna be able to see that next week. All in all, I have to say I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, I know I got a little bit frustrated with it here and there. Uh, but I knew going into this that I was kind of really stretching myself in terms of my skill and experience. The fact that I have a result and that I've got something that seems operational, I'm absolutely pumped with it. So thanks a bunch guys to everyone that helped me out. Thanks a bunch for watching the video. If you like this video, like it. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button down below. See ya.